Long ago, in America, a baby was born. He was much larger than a usual baby, and by the time he was fully grown, he would measure 30 feet in height. His name was Alfred Bulltop Stormalong. He loved to watch the ships, and at the age of 12, he joined his first crew. Sign me up. They gave him the job of lookout due to his height. He was extremely fit and hardworking and well-liked among the rest of the crew. One day, he spotted a ship in the distance and called out to the captain. Ship on the horizon, captain. Looks like pirates heading in this direction. They knew they would not outrun them, but thanks to Stormalong's keen sight, they had time to cobble together a plan. That day, they were transporting barrels of molasses. How about we spread molasses along the deck? That'll stop them in their tracks, said Stormalong. And they did. When the pirate ship got near, they feigned surrender. Come aboard, we are no match for you, said the captain. The pirates climbed onto the ship and became stuck in the molasses, just as Stormalong had planned. They tied the pirates up and took them back into port with them. Good job, Stormalong. You saved us. To reward your quick wits and hard work, I would like to promote you to first mate. Thank you, sir. After a few more years, Stormalong put together his own crew and captained his own ship, the Corsair. He wanted it to be the biggest ship around and had it built especially. Rumours of its size travelled. Many thought them greatly exaggerated. Some said that he needed a stable of horses on board for his crew to travel the length of the ship. The most extreme was that the crew would have to pull the mast down when they passed the sun or moon as to not scrape against them. He loved the stories. The ship was too large for many harbours though, and so it spent most of its time on the ocean, which suited Stormalong, as that was where he liked to be. After many adventures, including mishaps on the English Channel and at Panama, he came face to face with a huge sea monster, the mythical Kraken. He could not believe his eyes. It's real! It's real! He was shouting as it began to attack the Corsair. He fought against it, but it retreated and escaped. Dejected, he turned his ship towards port. He had never failed a conquest before and retired somewhere out in Midwest America to live a solitary life as a farmer. After he grew tired of that, he also tried his hand as a rancher, but still the sea was calling to him. So he returned, older, wiser, but just as strong as he ever was. It feels good to be back behind the wheel of the Corsair he shouted as he left port. Eventually, it happened. He ran into the Kraken again. My old rival, he exclaimed. You won't be getting away this time. His time as a rancher had paid off, and he managed to lasso the Kraken. It tried to escape, but he held on tight and managed to wrestle it toward a whirlpool which he had spied. At the last moment, Stormalong let go of the rope, and watched as the whirlpool swallowed up the Kraken, never to be seen again. Good riddance. You do not mess with Alfred Bulltop Stormalong, he said, and he dusted off his hands. Stormalong could not give up the sea and continued as captain into his old age. One day, he upset the captain of another ship. The captain had a steamboat, and having never seen one before, seeing the smoke rising from it, Stormalong had worried that it had caught fire and poured water over the engine. Furious, the steamboat captain challenged him to a transatlantic race. I accept. Of course, he accepted. It was a difficult race and took all of his strength. He won by a large margin, but the strain was too much for him and he collapsed. This was the death of Alfred Bulltop Stormalong. His crew gathered to place his body into the water. And his first mate spoke up. He lived at sea. He died at sea. 
and he shall be buried at sea, the place he loved. Hopefully, old Davy Jones will open up his locker to accept our captain.